Welcome back to Enthador, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Marcus Aurelius, and this is Dwarf Fortress version 0.42, and we are the Fortress of Sand Pillar. And I told you that we would come back when something exciting happened, and I'm sorry to say that just nothing exciting ever happens at Sand Pillar. It is already the 9th of Felsite in 153, so late spring of 153, and apparently... Everyone seems to think that Sand Pillar is the safest place in the world to be because we already have over 150 dwarves. Just migrants are coming out the wayside. But not only that, but everyone wants to visit Sand Pillar. We have three bards, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more bards. Many of them are human. We have a poet, and of course, our usual retinue of camels. And those are just the guests. And then we've allowed three bards to, to join our fortress. A human bard, two, all three human bards. And we've also signed on five mercenaries to help our armies. So it looks like everyone wants to be a part of Sand Pillar. And of course, Jaxie is doing a great job with the tavern. In fact, she's doing such a good job with the tavern that I've had to turn away something like 10 performers who wanted to join my fortress. And I'm just like, no, you freeloaders. We have more bards than we could ever possibly need. And uh, obviously, they're competing with, with Ukor here, who has to earn his keep as well. So you know, I, had, I had to tell him no. I mean, I don't, I don't see any benefit to accepting every bard in the entire realm of Enthador into our fortress because, I mean, that's just crazy. But everyone wants to hang out here. It's just this is the place to be, probably because every other fortress in our kingdom is being overrun by the goblins, but for some reason they're leaving Sand Pillar alone. I don't know why. Crazy. But look at all the dogs we have. They're puppying it up like no one's business. It's just crazy time right now. And let's see. We've got this defensive area all set up here. And we've got our squads all trained. This our human. We even have a human fighting with us. That's pretty awesome. We still don't have any bolts, so they haven't practiced their, their firing. But we can practice our firing on the goblins. But look at this. Look at this tavern. I mean, this is the happening place to be. There's bards everywhere. more bards than there are visitors. I mean, even there's Lisa Duin. He's hanging out. He's having a good time. Let's see what he's doing, actually. He is... Yeah, what, what's your... What's your... What are you doing right now, dude? What's your activity... He's listening to a story. Okay, who's telling the story? He's listening to the story too. You're listening to the story. Oh, oh, I saw, I saw, I saw it. Garai. Garai is telling a story. And he's not even, he's not even one of the bards. He's just a guy. And he's like, oh, let, me, let me tell you a story, everybody. Let me tell you about. And everybody's listening. I mean, people are in awe at the story by Garai. We have maths here. Oh, that's what I, sh I should probably introduce all of our new people because there are like a billion of them. So let's go with that. We have... All right, where did we stop last time? I don't even remember. I, f I feel like we did these guys, yeah. So I don't... Do we do Bork, Glasgow, Dabnar, Thixka, Dennis, Mick, Blarney Buff, Fred Valde, Gwendolyn, Kratos, Shadow, Ban? Yeah. I'm sorry if I'm doing these wrong. I, again, I had to compress the names to fit them in the thing. Then we have Riok, Wolf, Kesvik, Zarek, Alebeard, Ari, Black Tweety, Hephaestus. These two people are uh, either children or or mercenaries. Microchasm, Pinkie Pie, Slavko XXX, Soleil. And we have another mercenary. Um, Baldur the Great, Cubsy, Doom Guy, Dreadlock Mohawk, Dweezel, Gavin, Grug Near, Grug Tar, Leviathan, Leviathan TM, or trademark, Lonnie Ironborn, Mikhail Abdul Hakim, Mazd, Mechajeb, Melora, Nebuchad, Korkon Ranon, Ragnar, Reinhard, Sketched 2, Sophia Stonebomb, Swain Forkbeard, Turin Turumbar, Urist McSkeleton, and Vicathiel and Wevericus. Wevericus Steel. Burr. <laughs> steel. Steel something. Um, Wevericus. Who are you, Wevericus? You are. Whoop, boop, boop, boop. You are Wevericus. 
Steel brow. Steel brow. And again, I'm sorry, I can only fit 16 letters, so, so sometimes I have to, uh, to make it shorter. But let's profile one of these amazing and wonderful citizens of Sand Pillar. Number 106. That's Turan, or Turin, Turambar. Little X there for profiled. Sweet. All right, Turin, what's your story, buddy? Let's figure this out. Turin, Turambar. He is storing an item in a stockpile currently. He's working instead of socializing in the pub like everyone else. Good job. You're already endearing yourself to me, Turin. His wife is Melora. His eldest daughter is Alice. So Alice came to the fortress before he did. So Alice was here first and said, Hey, Mom and Dad, Sand Pillar is really, really safe, despite being next door to the Goblin Capital. So why don't you move here? Because I'm nervous. I'm nervous that your fortress or hillocks is going to get overcome by the goblins. And then that's it, though, as far as family. Wow, this is a small little family. No cousins, no nothing. But Toon Asotung is a passing acquaintance, and that's it. Wow. Okay. Well, Melora, you don't know a lot of people, but the few people you do know are in the fortress, so that's good. It's fantastic. We should all work together. I agree. I agree. Let's see. You are you were interested in fine tables, because, yeah, we have a lot of those. You filthy the fork through inebriation. I think that's pretty standard. I feel like all the dwarves pretty much do that. You felt restless after being able to rest. So wait, give, let me get this straight. You are unhappy because we are allowing you to rest after you were, after you needed rest and recuperation, and now you're restless. I don't know about that one, but he was delighted after watching a performance. I mean, everybody is. All, all we have at this place is performances. We should call it Fun Pillar. <laughs> That's not what it's supposed to be. It's a military fortress. We're supposed to be fighting the goblins. Anyway. He, uh, he's a former member of the Orb of Jungles. He is 103 years old. 103 years old and no family? That's crazy. He was born in the year 50. Tall and very fat. He likes limonite, rose gold, rhodolites, crossbows, spiked balls, llamas for their wool, ratmen for their curiosity, and the words of the sable truth. He likes maize beer, that is corn beer olive oil, and squash. He detests bats. All right, well, there's really nothing in our fortress that you're going to love or hate, to be perfectly honest. All right, so that's that. Let's let's also look at what else we've done. Because, again, nothing exciting is happening, so I might as well just tell you what's going on. So we've got wood stockpile here. We're building a lot of stuff. We've got some doors in planning mode here. Let's unpause. That way they don't have those giant X's. We are finally starting to collect sand which will then ma we'll make our green glass spikes. The first spikes are going to go here in the weapon straps, and then we'll put the spikes down below. Our dining room is complete, and it's being filled to the brim with cooked meals, although the, the booze is filling a little more slowly. We've completely mined out this floor of anything valuable, as you can see. So I'm waiting for everybody to collect everything they mined, and then I'm going to close it off to help FPS. But in the meantime, I've gone down to this floor where we are starting again to mine. And I'll eventually mine all of it out too. I'm going to definitely completely mine out all the first floors because they are all loaded with coal. We have another petition? No, Endoc. We have too many goddamn bards as it is. And so, yeah, we're going to get the coal and whatever is in this floor. And so that before we even need to move down, you know, to the deep... I mean, this is where the coal is. Why would we dig anywhere else? We have all this beautiful dirt that we can, or rock, that we can dig out coal and iron ore. I mean, there's just, the only reason we need right now to go deep is flux. That's really the only thing we need. Okay, so here's bedroom level one, completely full of everybody. No, Ilral, we don't want you. God, what is this? We're like the Globe Theater of medieval London, I mean, or Victorian London. It's like, come on, guys. So we've got our military all living in these larger rooms, only homegrown military. We do not have our mercenaries in these rooms, but they're slowly being put together, not very fast. Not all of our new citizens have a room yet. Some of them are still homeless. So 
I never ever see people sleeping in the dorms. I don't I don't get it. But anyway. And oh, I turn this into a nobles area for when we do finally get a baron or whatever. There's the crypt. There's the Oh, we have another damn bard. It's like Bard Central. This is the uh bedroom. This is the uh entryway, which is gonna be the office, I suppose, and this will be the dining room. And if, if we ever get pissed off at the noble, we can just dig out this wall and, and flood them to death. I'm just kidding. We're not going to do that. But, mans, what do you want? A door in your throne room or office. Now, yeah, I guess that makes sense because your office isn't quite good yet. But a door? Like you just want a door just lying around? And a demand is is pretty big deal. It's more important than a mandate. So you want a door. I was going to put a statue in there, but again, if you really want a door, I, I could do that. I mean, it's not... I guess there's no reason not to. So you want a door in your office. Okay, let's build a door. Oh, we don't have any doors. Oh, shoot. Is our stone statue ready yet? Yeah, Let's just, we're just going to build you a statue. We're not going to build you a door. You're probably going to get pissed off, but you know what? Just just go drink it off, buddy. That's just dumb. I mean, who wants a door <laughs> just just lying in their office? In fact, can I just can I just take your office as it currently exists and expand it to include... Yeah, it already includes both doors. So, what the hell? You just want a door lying there? Okay, whatever. All right, moving down. We have um, three, unfortunately, three dead dwarves now. Of course, there was Birdie Bot, who we looked at last one. But then there's also Black Iron Tarkus. Now, Black Iron Tarkus, I'm not entirely sure. Okay, so he succumbed to infection, slain by the dwarf Homer Veilshield. So, so we're having a lot of tavern brawls. And I'm not enjoying this because like, it feels like the hospital is continuously filled with tavern brawl victims and here we go black iron tarkus dead by our own homer homer killed him in a tavern brawl i bet you if i had dwarven justice we'd probably try to put him behind bars but i hate dwarven justice because all it does is make the dwarves who are uh, in justice upset and and then that just makes them more likely to tantrum and cause more problems but yeah so black iron tarkus was a loving mother and wife and homer slew him in a tavern brawl you know what i gotta say though i, I guess they fixed it remember in anvil quested it would just say went missing. Or actually, was that just enemies? Yeah, I think it was enemies, but hopefully they fixed that. So then here we have Rob. Masterful Siltstone Memorial to Rob by Dwarf Comic. In memory of Rob, born 129, bled, or bled, died of thirst in the year 152. Creator of Moral Gores, the Oaken Rampart, lover of the style of pregnancy. Okay, it's a little weird, but it's cool. And this is Birdie Bot. I think the same thing we've already seen. Oh no, this time it says she was at one with copper. So okay, if you make multiple slabs for the same dwarf, they're gonna find different things that you that you did well. So she she was a really big fan of copper. There was no copper at uh, Sand Pillar, but so it goes. And now we have a new famous artifact. Is whoa whoa whoa. What's what's your deal? Nobody here's unhappy. Colin Cole, what, what's your problem, buddy? Is lost in rage. Uh, why? You look just fine. You killed a dwarf a couple years, three years before coming to the fortress. But why are you lost in rage? I, it doesn't doesn't say that down here. It says everybody's happy and fine. Why? Why are you so mad? We have to figure this out. We have to stop everything and figure this out. Colin Cole. Okay. What's your, what's your deal, Colin Cole? Your happiness is fine. Okay, well then why are you... Ah, oh, I see. You're violent. You like to brawl. And you occasionally overindulge. Okay, so you're just you're just a you're just a fighter. You're vengeful. 
You have a propensity toward hate. Oh, no, no, you don't. You do not easily hate. Okay, that's good. And you know what? I just noticed this. I'm reading all this, and you guys aren't seeing it. You have no idea what I'm talking about. So, here we go. <laughs> Colin Cole, sorry. You tend to hang on to grudges. You tend to... Okay, so you're not very thoughtless, though. You're thoughtful. And you dream of ruling the world. Okay. Well, I can, I can see why you're... You dislike hamsters. What the hell's wrong with you? Hamsters are awesome. You're 18 years old, so you're just young. You know, you're young. You're going through puberty. And you are a good fighter because you've been brawling in the tavern. But apparently you're you're fine. You don't have any any horrible stress. So, uh, all right, whatever. I'm, I'm sorry that you're in a blind rage. Uh, that makes me sad to hear that, but such is life. So, okay, let's look at this. Okay, so apparently we created three scrolls. This is a sperm whale parchment scroll. Ew. The rollers are made from slate. Unwritten or written on the item is a guide entitled Time Spent with the Hamlet, authored by Delol Gallibulb. It concerns the Hamlet trade knots. The writing is full of force. Overall, the prose is passable. So no, one of our dwarves did not write this. This just exists somewhere. Oh, it's the owner of a human bard. Okay, so they're actually... Okay, so this one doesn't have an owner, though. It was a novel entitled And You Sang Boils, authored by Sigun Seized Paddles. The work has no particular subject. It just rambles on. Kind of like I do. The writing is somewhat showy, yet it is reasonably serious. Kind of like my commentary. Overall, the prose is amateurish at best. Kind of like my... Well, I've done that enough already. Okay. Then we have the meaning of Entered Wonder, a precious fire opal bound codex. So I, I kind of don't like this. Like, I don't mind if like books that we wrote are listed here, but just random books that exist in the fortress. It's a book. Some books contain the secrets of life and death. It's a 124 page guide entitled The Meaning of Entered Wonder, authored by Melville Ropesooth. It concerns the forest retreat Entered Wonder. Overall, the prose is not awful, but not very good either. All right, I don't like this. I Frankly, I don't like it. Because it's going to load up this screen with all kinds of crap that don't mean anything to me. But anyway, did I ever show you the Lignite Aral? I did. That's the, um, the bagpipey thing. So let's look at Ath Ser Tezul, or Charcoal Noose, a tower cap amulet. This is a tower cap amulet. All craftsmanship is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with cushion Lignite cabochons, decorated with hazel wood, and encircled with bands of giant dingo leather, and trillion cut pink jades. This object menaces with spikes of tower cap and iron. On the item is an image of Tulon Tamadseal, the dwarf, and dwarves in iron. Tulon Tam Tamadseal, tamed. <laughs> Tulon Tamed Seal is surrounded by the dwarves. The artwork relates to the ascension of the dwarf Tulon Tamed Seal to the position of queen of the Oaken Flags in 29. On the item is an image of a moon snail man. Moon snail man? In honey badger bone. That's, yeah. Say that three times fast. Moon Snail Man, Honey Badger Bone. On the item is an image of diamonds in giant dingo leather. Now that was made by one of our children, so not a named member of the fortress. So now we have engraved the first six pillars, one for each year we've been in the fortress. Although because I didn't do them in a timely manner, some of them have events listed on them that are to come later. So this is supposed to be the first year. And this is actually good. This is an exceptionally designed image of dwarves by Kriegmeister. And the dwarves are laboring. And it rep relates to the founding of Sand Pillar. So by the flag of striking of the Oaken Flag. So this is perfect. It's in the first year of our engravings. And it represents the founding of our fortress. Which is exactly what it should. Then we have a superiorly designed image of Iskal Mindpools, the human. And Uthal Dress Rain, the human. By Kriegmeister, once again. And Uthal is striking down Ishkak. The artwork relates to the killing of Ishkak by Uthal in the Courageous Dunes in the late spring of 131. So this is an event that happened in our region, our biome, but not necessarily relating to our fortress or even our civilization. So every fortress we have is going to be in a different biome, so they're all going to have different like local history. Let's see. This is Dwarves. This is another foundation of Sand Pillar. Kriegmeister likes that topic. Oh, this one's by Gendrick. And it is a Siltstone Scepter by Kriegmeister. So Gendrick is raising 
no, so I'm sorry, Kriegmeister engraved this, but it's of a Siltstone Scepter that Jendrick had created. And it relates to the masterful Siltstone Scepter created by the Dwarf Jendrick. Trade Honor. That's a cool name for a Crafts Dwarf. Trade Honor. I like it. For the Flag of Striking at Sand Pillar in the mid-autumn of 152. See, theoretically, this should only be 150 stuff, but again, I dropped the ball. Bad Marcus. So this is another one of, uh, of uh, Jendrick's creations. Crescent Moons by Dwarf Comic. Nice to see Dwarf Comic representing here. Oh, another. This is the image of Eshka Catchmops, the human, and Column Rent, the giant dingo by Dwarf Comic. Column Rent is striking down Eshka. So this is, this is when a giant dingo killed a human in 129. So about 31 years before our fortress was founded. Ah, this is an exceptionally designed image of Valton R. Neo Whipped, the Dwarf and Dwarves by Dwarf Comic. Valton R is being surrounded by the Dwarves, and this relates to his ascension to the position of Chief Medical Dwarf of the Flag of Striking. Very good. And another gender thing. Okay, so this is our second year. We've got Zolban Room Creature, the Dwarf by Dwarf Comic. Zolban is laboring. The artwork relates to the settling of the dwarf Zolban, a room creature, in Sand Pillar in the mid autumn of 150. Who? Who the? Who? Zolban, room creature. Maybe it was someone whose name I changed, but they just didn't change it in the engraving. I don't know. Ah, Man's Holtkrantz. I mean, they changed everybody else's name though, so I, I don't know. So this is this is in relating to the death of Birdie Bot and how Hans Holtkrantz became the mayor. Um, this is actually the departure of him from the mayor in the early summer 152. Okay. Another gender item. Oh, here we go. A Minotaur. Satheth the Minotaur in Izmir Waterflyers the Human by Dwarf Comic. Dwarf Comic likes to engrave images of conflict. I seem to I seem to notice here. Oh, but the human is striking down the Minotaur. This was in 133. Humans and goblins. The humans are fighting with the goblins. The artwork relates to the attack by the Empires of Confederacy on the Mangy Spider. So we're probably allied with the Empires of Confederacy because we hate the Mangy Spider. Not only are they mangy, but they're spiderous. And this was the Clash of Scrapes in 131. This is another dwarf comic joint. It's Ensnath News Blanket, the Jaguar, and Damstow Evil Clouds, the Goblin. And the goblin is striking down the jaguar. This was a long, long time ago in 27. Oh, here we go. So this is a image by Dwarf Comic of Kriegmeister. And this is when Kriegmeister created Wealth's Revered, the Iron Crossbow. The artifact is being used by our militia commander in 150. That was one of the first artifacts. That was the first artifact that we ever made. Okay, here's an exceptionally designed image of Vamp McVamperson. Oh yeah, he was elected to mayor. And I said, no, you're not going to be our mayor. Okay, this is the, another relation to the foundation of Sam Pillar by Dwarf Comic. Engraved on the wall is an exceptionally designed image of Impaled Envious. I'm sorry, I keep doing this wrong. It's Impaled Devious. Thank you, Liquidor, for pointing that out to me. The Competitive Haim, the Siltstone Weapon Rack, one of our recent artifacts. Okay, this is a selection of Birdie Bot to the position of Expedition Leader in 150. Rest in peace, Birdie Bot. Clan Board, the Lignite Aral. Perfect, that's one of our artifacts. This is Zolak, Glutton Hates, the Goblin. And Osnos, Greatest Fell, the Growth of Mastery, the Hydra. Oh, wow, we have a Hydra here in the Courageous Dunes. And the Hydra is striking down the Goblin. That means that Hydra might still be alive. Oh, here we go. An exceptionally designed image of Chief Jeronka, Riddled Gloves, the Dwarf, and a Walnut Wood Bed by Dwarf Comic. I guess it's a um, a boudoir photo <laughs> engraving of Chief Jeronka with his bed. Ooh. <laughs> dwarf Comic, I didn't know. The artwork relates to the masterful Walnut Wood Bed created by the Dwarf Chief Jeronka, because he our, he's our master woodcrafter, or wood carpenter, by the flag of striking in Sand Pillar in midsummer of 152. Oh crap, we have a rock. This is an image by Dwarf Comic of 
Nugaslu, Devil Jackals, the Goblin, and Sog, Summer Sky, the Pride of Courage, the Rock. And it looks like the Rock killed the Goblin, and this was the summer of year eight. This was a long time ago. And that's it. That's it. So we have a lot of a lot of history already. It looks like there's a lot going on in the Courageous Dunes, and that makes sense because it's the home of a goblin civilization, so certainly there's a lot going on here. Not so much about Anvil... Or, <laughs> not Anvil Quested. Not so much about Sand Pillar, though. You know, some doctors, some mayors, our resident vampire, the foundation of the fortress. Good stuff. Don't get me wrong, but, you know, could be better. All right, our crypt is looking good. This is looking fine. We're slowly getting rid of the boulders here. We're making some good progress. We've got a lot going on in terms of work orders here. We're, we're making armor for our military dwarves. We're making menacing iron spikes and glass spikes for our weapon traps and our spikes at the bottom of the pit. We're smelting ore, of course. We're making coke. We're making mugs because a lot of dwarves are complaining that they have to drink out of their bare hands or whatever. And we're making more bedroom items. We're also brewing drinks pretty much constantly. Let's see what we got here. We have, yeah, 492 drinks. So our dwarves are, are drinking us out of house and home, really. I wonder if, no, I, I was going to say if maybe they had a list in the population screen of our non-citizens, but just people who are staying here, but they don't. We have tons of cooked meals. We have just gobs of seeds. And we're running low on everything else because we're basically cooking constantly. We've currently created... Almost a million dwarf bucks of wealth, 978,000 dwarf bucks. So we're almost at a million. We have a population of 162. Let's take a look at justice. I just want to see if... Yeah, so the mayor's pissed. And he, he wants... Um, he wants Nexus Lay to go to prison for 76 days for not... Or for violating a production order. And you know what? Screw you, mayor. I don't... That's why I never use Dwarven Justice. I'm sorry, but I think the whole thing is just stupid. If they change the emotional system so that Dwarves in jail like don't become unhappy that they're in jail, I mean, it's their own damn fault, then I'd go with it. Then I'd be like, all right, fine. Or if they just put Dwarves in jail who deserved it, right? Because nobody here nobody here wants to put um, you know, that guy in, in prison, uh, our boy here. Let's see here. Our boy, Colin Cole for murdering somebody. Apparently that's not enough to draw the ire of Dwarven Justice, but not doing a production order? I mean, come on. What kind of justice is that? Justice might be blind, but justice in Sand Pillar is kind of dumb. So, anyway. I'm Marcus Aurelius, ladies and gentlemen. I sincerely hope we get attacked by something, although it's not going to be that exciting because we're just going to wait out the siege. So really, let's Hopefully we can get our defenses set up and then we can get attacked by something. That'll be pretty nice. I don't trust our military yet to fight goblins. They'll just all get killed and lead to a tantrum spiral. And who really wants that? We do have a ton of war dogs, but they're generally pretty weak. I could pass them down in the pit. That would be interesting. But again, there's no use in even utilizing the pit until we have the weapons traps on the entrance to knock people down into it. And by people, I mean goblins. So once again... Ladies and gentlemen, I am Marcus Aurelius. I'd like to thank you very much for following the adventurous saga of Sand Pillar. Have a good one.